Welcome to admins.com and our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. As you know, MPLS VPN provides any-to-any -any connectivity, but there might be time when you might not want all the sites to communicate to each other directly. So in this lab, we're going to look at how you can implement a more advanced MPLS topology and we will use a hop and spoke topology as our example. And then we're going to look at how we can exchange routes or also known as a route leak between VRF, which is the basis of extranet MPLS VPN. Now for a physical lab topology, we still have eight routers, R1 through R8 and one switch, switch one, with a three, a four, R5 and R2 connected in a almost a full mesh, zero point to point link and the other routers and switch are connected across VLAN. Okay, so if you've been watching our previous MPLS video, you should be pretty familiar with this topology by now. So now moving down to our layer 3 topology. In the middle, we have our MPLS core with R1, R2, and R4 being a PE routers and R3 and R5, which is kind of grayed out here being a P only router since we're not going to be touching them. And we kind of already have an MPLS VPN set up as shown in this diagram here with site 1, 2, and 4 belongs to the same VRF or customer VRF C1. And then here on the top, we have site 3 that we're going to be using to simulate our extranet network. Okay, and for our PE to CE routing protocols, we are using BGP and these are the ASN. Okay, for C1, ASN is 65124 and for the extranet VRFC2, the ASN is 65010. And currently we have a full routing exchange among the site 1, 2, and 4 within their VRF and the VRFC2 is currently isolated. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our task number one with the hop and spoke topology. We need to configure R1, R2, R7, and switch one such that any traffic between the two spoke sites, site one and two, must traverse the hub site. Remember currently the sites can talk to each other directly, which is the default behavior of MPLS. And here we have a lot of hints. First, overall, we are allowed to use only one route target, 100 colon 101. And then on the site 4, we are allowed to use one new VLAN, VLAN 72 with the subnet, one new route distinguisher, 104, two new VRF named C1 underscore 2 hub and C1 underscore 2 spoke. And then on the site 2, we are allowed to have one new VRF called C1 and uh, underscore site 2, and then one new route distinguisher, 300, 300. And we're going to go through the explanation and see how each of these parameters is going to be used. So first, let's go through our design and see how we are going to achieve this. Let me bring up a Microsoft Paint that we can draw. Okay, so what we're trying to achieve here is that currently R6 and R8, for example, can talk directly to each other. What we're going to want to do is for the spoke sites, we want it to go through our hub, which is R7. So the traffic will go from R6 somehow first have to traverse R7 before you turn right back to get to R8. So that's the desire routing path that we want to achieve in this particular task. Okay, so let's talk about how we're gonna do this. So the whole idea is we have to stop the spoke sites, in this case it's R8 and R6 to exchange route directly through R1, but instead in order for R6 to learn route from R8, it has to be coming from the hub, which is R2. So basically we want the R6 to think that R2, or actually R1 in this case, to think that R2 is the next stop to get to R8 from R6 and vice versa. And the way to do that, in the sense that we somehow need to get R2 to believe that it can reach R8 and R6 through R7. So somehow the R7 has to advertise the R6 and R8 routes to R2. And there isn't really a simple way to achieve this with the current topology. So what we're going to be doing here, we're going to create an extra VLAN right here, which is our VLAN 72 as allowed by our task right here, one new VLAN, VLAN 72. And the reason why we're going to need this is, what we're going to be trying to be uh, doing is, we're going to use our VLAN 27, which is the VLAN we already have for the R7 to continue learning the routes from the spoke sites. But since once the R7 learns the route from that VLAN, it will not be be re-advertising it back to R2. That's why we kind of have to create a separate path for R7 to advertise that route back to R2. And that way R2 will think that it can reach R6 and R8 through R7. 
But the way to force R2 to do that, we're going to have to split the VRF on R2 from 1, which is what we have right now, to 2 VRF. So 1 VRF will be dedicated to learning the spokes routes, and then the other VRF will be dedicated to advertising the routes to the spoke. Okay, so from the task right here set at Psi4, we are allowed to use one new route distinguisher. So that's going to be our second VRF since we already have the first route distinguisher, which is 100, 100 that we can continue using. And then we can create a two new VRF called C12 hub. So this will be the traffic that's coming from the spoke going towards the hubs. And then there's another VRF called C12 spoke. And this is the VRF the hub's going to use to reach a spoke. So let's first label our VRF. Top one will be C1 to hub. And then the bottom one will be C1 to spoke. For the C1 to hub, we're going to give it a new RD of 100 colon 4. So RD is going to be 100 colon 4, which is mandated by our task right here. One new RD, and we're going to continue using the RD 100 100 for a C12 spoke. So RD for that will be 100, 100. Now the crucial part that's going to make all of these possible are the definition of route target because route target is going to define what routes will be imported and exported in the VRF. So let's take care of the C12 hub VRF first. We're going to be using this for traffic from the spoke to hub. So we need to make sure that the routes, the R2 is going to be advertised will be imported by the spoke sites. Okay, so here we're going to use a new route target right here, which is 10101 that we are allowed to use. So this will be for the export only. Since we're going to be using this particular VRF to draw traffic from the spoke only. So that would be a route target. Make sure it's only export. This is going to be 10101. Okay, we're not going to even have a route target for import because route target for the import is going to be defined under the VRFC12 spoke since this is where we, or the VRF that we want the router R2 to learn the route from the spoke site so the R7 knows how to reach it. That's why it's the VRF is called C12 spoke. And since both of these sites already have a or are already exporting the route target of 100 100, so we can just continue using that for our import. For this VRF, so it'll be RT for the import is 100, 100. And just to make a quick note here, since we are not really exporting routes on this VRF, the RD or the value of the route distinguisher is not really matter because usually the route distinguisher gets prepended to the VPN V4 routes to make it unique. But since we are not exporting any routes in this VRF, the RD can be pretty much set to anything. Here we just pick, actually let's make it uh, more unique. Let's make it zero zero so let me kind of uh, erase this just to show you that the rd can be pretty much anything at this point so we're going to make it rd zero zero okay so now with the setup we know that the all of the spokes routes will be learned by a uh, two in the vrfc12 spoke since it's importing a any routes has been tagged with the rt 100 100 and then the route that's been learned will be advertised from R2 to R7 across this new VLAN that we have. And then R7 will basically re-advertise that route back out to R2. But this time it's going to be learned through a different VRF, which is C12 hub, once the R2 has learned those routes. So at this point, the R2 believed that it can reach R6 and R8 through R7. It will advertise those route back and those route will be exported with the RT of 100 101 so at this point we need to make sure that r6 and r8 are actually is route r1 that's going to be learning those routes we'll be importing a route that's tagged with that into the corresponding vrf okay so we're going to have to change because by default when we define the rt without specifying whether it's import or export it does both so we're going to have to cross that out and then do a rt import of a 100 101 while continuing doing the export of 100 100. Okay, so same thing here for R2 is RT import 
100-101 and RT export 100-100. Okay, so going back to our task real quick, we've seen to use all the parameter that's been chosen for us for site four, but site two, you might be wondering why we might need a new VRF and a new route distinguisher. We're gonna look into that once we have most of this set up and see why we might need a separate VRF on R1 for site two.